This is John Bailey, the epic voice of Honest Trailers, and you're listening to the Five-ish Fangirls Podcast. It's a fangirls podcast with five-ish people. The tangents and squee will continue. Squee. The tangents and squee continue all the way to episode... 381 of Five-ish Fangirls Podcast. And just like every year, Phantom Christmas, the gift that keeps on giving. Welcome mm-hmm. everyone to this week's episode of the Five-ish Fangirls Podcast. So glad you know us. Let's start off like a new Rick one virtual table and see who joined us this week. This is Brittany Belvedere. This is Chrissy in Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, everybody. Chrissy's got internet at her new house. Uh, Yay! Yay! Yes, and I'm not on vacation. (laughs) That's, yeah, the internet has been quite the saga, but I I will spare you the details. (laughs) Suffice it to say, internet service provider customer service is crap. But we all knew this. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> but yeah. Oh. Anyway, but I'm back. Yay! And in my new in my new digs, and we're trying out. Uh, we we've set up our desks downstairs in the living room, which is not ideal for podcasting. So I'm up in a bedroom. Hopefully, it'll work. Crash yeah. your <laughs> The things we do mm-hmm. for fandom. Oh. Yep. All right. Well, yeah. before we get to all the goodness that came out of San Diego over the weekend, we have some non fandom Christmas news to discuss first, starting with, unfortunately, some 10 o'clock news. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, this one hurts, man. And this, and this just this broke today, this morning. Yes, yeah, it did. He, yeah, he died like, yesterday. Really? really? Yeah. 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 So David Warner, which uh, yes, so he looking. I was just looking at his IMDb, and like, like he's one of those that has like so much voice acting that it's like yes. you may not know his face or his name, but you've heard him. Hmm. Or Somewhere. you hear his voice, yeah. Or you've heard of you hear his voice in 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 a you know an mm-hmm. animated or a, a, a you know he does not a big finish, and you're like, wait a minute, that's the guy from whatever uh-huh. movie? Because I mean, people people have been talking about his. He was in Titanic. He was he was um, uh, Cal's Tron. Butler or whatever. <laughs> yeah, Tron mm-hmm. uh, and Star Trek, and I'm like. No, he was the mad scientist from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Oozed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you see him? Yeah. I, I, so, yeah, that's where I know him from. from. That's where I've always known him from. And I thought there was like, there, there, in all the posts and tributes I saw for him today, I was like, there was one place that put a picture of him from that movie. And I'm like, yes, somebody else knows that movie. Or, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> this. Well, and I just recently started Babylon 5 and I put on an episode this morning and serendipity enough, it was the episode that he starred in called Grail from first season. So it was like, and then I scrolled through Facebook and saw them like, oh man, I was like, well, hey, good, good episode. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he was, he's done a lot of Doctor Who, uh, especially Big Finish. Um, he was on an episode of Doctor Who. He was the professor in Cold War. Um, mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Uh, I guess supposedly he was working on the Big Finish 60th anniversary special with Christopher Eccleston. So hopefully oh, wow. they got his stuff recorded. Yeah. Uh, or at least enough of it that they can use what they've got and maybe yeah. use like outtakes or whatever do the things that big finish does with editing to make it work mm-hmm. yeah well big finish they know what they're doing so we'll yeah. uh we'll see how it all goes but yeah i mean he's done tons and tons of, of audio work for them which 
is great. And I mean, if you've, you should check out, if you've ever had a chance to check out the Unbound series, I believe he played a non-canonical doctor in, mm-hmm. in that. I mean, it's like, he had like mm-hmm. 10 of them, I think, 10 or 12, mm-hmm. if I remember right. I think so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. So it's not like, it, it, it's basically Big Finish's version of what if that they did mm-hmm. years and years and years ago. But yeah, he was in, he was the doctor in one of those. So check yeah. those out if uh, you you feel so inclined, but yeah. yes, but yeah, definitely, definitely a loss for fandoms across the board and just cinema in general because he was Mm -hmm. so prolific so prolific Mm -hmm. and he just he just was he just always popped up in these random places Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely definitely a a staple of of 90s animation cartoons and things like that so Uh he's batman he's a personification of hey it's that voice yes it's that, yes yeah it's that guy <laughs> i know that voice mm-hmm. oh. oh well there is that uh i'm moving on to holly shared this because i did not know that this is going to be a thing um but coming this september which is not that far away actually <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, as you know august starts next week oh gee um, there is Jeez, a don't remind me <laughs> yeah there is a documentary being released in september about david bowie aptly named moon age daydream and it kind of looks like oh, a yes. drug-fueled madness color haired full very david bowie-esque uh looking so it's it's like if we could take david bowie and turn him into a documentary this is what you would get so um but it looks really cool and as a david bowie fan i look forward to seeing that on a big Mm -hmm. screen somewhere so but stay tuned to your local theater show times as we get to september so yes <laughs> so yeah that'll be that'll be a fun one mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah although although i hear that elvis biopic is pretty good or i guess i've heard positive things about it from several yeah. people so yeah, you know if you, if if you have if you haven't had your fill of 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 musician biopics then uh well there you go you got elvis and david bowie in the theater roughly yeah. around the same time. well david bowie's a documentary it's not a biopic so well okay but yeah if you need your music legend fix i guess mm-hmm. on the big screen <laughs> yeah we'll say that yeah although the elvis uh, the elvis biopic was done by Baz Luhrmann, so <laughs> that kind of still a that, that alone might make it worth it. Drug fuel, drug fueled, you know, multicolored entertainment for two hours ish. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right. Uh, speaking of August, starting next week. Next week is Gen Con, uh, as I am uh shoring up my schedule and con- confirming things with vendors and potential interviews and the like for content for our listeners um obviously stay tuned to all the gen con social medias for any changes and updates and that sort of thing but i know one thing that people were desperately waiting on was the gen con food truck schedule <laughs> <laughs> but of course because that's always important because if you want food that's not you know indiana convention center food court food um and you don't want to you know deal with the food court at the mall there are plenty of food trucks to uh partake from but they are on a schedule um 
because they do use two different locations. They do Georgia Street and the the street that runs, you know, around the corner from it, uh, perpendicular. <laughs> I was like, I'll get the geometric term there eventually. Um, and then they also go over to uh, the street in between the convention center and Lucas Oil Stadium. Um, so, you know, if you've got a favorite, you want to check to figure, you know, to see whether they've got the lunchtime shift, the evening shift, and which location they're going to be at, because um, that can change <laughs> depending on the day <laughs> and the time. So, but <laughs> definitely some returning favorites that I've eaten from in the past that I look forward to uh, partaking of again and some potential new ones so come hungry <laughs> <laughs> if you can't find something to eat at gen con you're doing something wrong oh that's all mm -hmm. i'm saying now if you can't find the time to get something to eat that's your own problem right Just finding food not a problem <laughs> So there's that. Um, and then, of course, uh, in the feeds um, for your wherever you find podcasts, we have a new episode of Gold Standard out there in the feeds with episode number 55, talking about the 1982 Best Picture winner, Gandhi. Um, so you can go listen to that. And then for our Patreon supporters, because I know we have some overlap there. Um, we have uh, July's Patreon request, which is the 1995, essentially cops and robbers film Heat. <laughs> the title alone is appropriate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. So, yeah, it's very hot here, but that's not the type of heat that they're talking about. The title's still appropriate. So make sure you have a have a, have an IC there. Yeah, <laughs> when you go in to see it. Just, yeah. just kidding. That was a terrible joke. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> All right, moving on to feedback. We've got feedback from the birthday girl, Shalane. Yes, happy birthday, Shalane. Yes. Happy, birthday, Shalane. Yes. Happy, 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 happy. Happy birthday from all of us to you. We wish it was our birthday so we could party too. Woo! <laughs> I, hope, I hope you don't have to work today, though. <laughs> I do too. But who knows? Anyway. Um, so she says she also really enjoyed Miss Marvel. She thought Kamala and the actress who played her were great and very funny. She says, if there was an Avenger Con, which, you know, we're all really hoping that that's a thing that actually happens at some point. Uh, mm -hmm. She says she would either go Scarlet Witch or Nebula. Um, and she says that there were a lot of Easter eggs at Avenger Yes, there were a lot of Easter eggs at Avenger Con. <laughs> I think I could spend just hours just going through those scenes going, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Frame uh, by frame. Uh, yeah. Slow-mo. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, and she says uh, Kamala and herself have a lot in common. They both love Captain Marvel and think she's awesome. Um, and uh, she was uh surprised to see her she thought maybe one of the scrolls was gonna show up kind of like at the end of wandavision it's like oh, that would have kind of made sense too but we've kind of already did that also so that's marvel they want to keep us on our toes not repeat themselves um and then um she's loving how much you know how much we're like we're getting these tv series but then those the, those characters are going to the movies and vice versa um she questions whether we'll get a season two of miss marvel i guess that's still up in the air at this point um i guess we'll have to wait and see how things go as far as the marvels yeah so um 
as she mentioned she she failed her driver's test once <laughs> but then she took it again and passed which is totally fine um uh, and she says it w- would have been fun if we if we had a, a we don't talk about Bruno moment in the show. <laughs> yeah. Maybe if we get a season two. <laughs> yep. Or maybe in the Marvels. <laughs> uh, this is so she also loves uh, Kamala's outfit. It wants a shirt representing it. I'm sure you can find it. The internet mm-hmm. is your friend. It's to go with her definitely have it if yeah to else. go with her america chavez shirt she's i imagine she'll lay that your wardrobe is a lot like mine where it's just a lot of ips on t-shirts mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. i had to i finally had to sort my t i had my t-shirt drawer by color but it got uh-huh. to the point where i had so many of different properties that i i had to sort it by ip instead <laughs> yeah i rachel i've kind of gotten to that point too i mean i have my clothes for my work and then i have my casual clothes which is mm-hmm. like you the t-shirts with all the ips i kind of had your like you're sorted by color but then it's just like wait a minute what color was that one i was looking for so i've had to go to ip <laughs> yeah <laughs> True. Yeah, I like, it really doesn't that. matter color because it tends to be jeans and a t-shirt so it's going to work anyway right. but it's Pretty like nice. which, <laughs> which fandom do I want to wear today Marvel, Star Wars, yeah. Corgis take your pick mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> or the mashup yes, Corgis are a fandom and I have more than one Corgi shirt <laughs> everything can be a fandom it's okay yes yeah, yeah. I, I've like I've got my, my one side is work shirts and one side is all my, my t-shirts and I have so many that I don't, I mean, I'm not, I'm not that organized with my, with my shirts and stuff, but at the same time, I'm kind of like, I don't really sort them by IP, but then again, it's like, it all just kind of gets, gets hung up in the closet in, anyway. It's like, so as long as I can find a t-shirt, I'm good. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, which one do I want to wear today? Oh, there's my, my back to the future. Doc Brown's time traveler shirt mm-hmm. oh my God, i love that one very, <laughs> very comfy very cool a lot of people okay. have been like wait a minute is that back to the future i love that movie i'm like yes yes mm-hmm. it is then you're like me and you've got shirts that are crossover like i have a disney fied doctor who shirt oh, oh nice. like, yes which one do i put this with? Do i put this with disney or doctor who <laughs> yeah i've i've done that before for and like mm, no nah, it just it just goes here. well it, if you had them sort of like ip in 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 ABC order, order. <laughs> yes yeah, so that's true that that's true unless there's something in between disney and doctor who hmm yes um she says uh she has a theory that so we're talking about mutants and the mcu uh, that Deadpool might be in a different universe, which is always a possibility, I guess, depending on where, how, because they've, they've made it very flimsy with Deadpool movies about yes. where exactly he fits in, even with just the fellow X-Men, whether it's the Patrick Stewart age X-Men or the James McAvoy x <laughs> <laughs> although then mm-hmm. we've had the younger x-men make a cameo in the second deadpool movie so but again they're being they're being very fast and loose with deadpool one because you can do that with deadpool um, yeah. and two because i think they were aware that the the continuity didn't necessarily matter at that point because mm-hmm. <laughs> things are cha- things were changing uh mm-hmm. so yeah uh i don't i don't think it really matters per se because once he is fully if they bring him fully into quote unquote our universe the the main universe the the 616 or whatever you want to call it the 199999 whatever um he's just he's you know he's just gonna act like he was there the entire time oh yeah <laughs> so yeah. I, I can't wait 
for the wood that, the, yeah, all the fourth wall breaking he's gonna do. I cannot yeah. wait to see what yeah. that's gonna be like. Yeah. So he's he's probably gonna act like he was there the entire time while also breaking the fourth wall and referencing the fact that he has not been there the entire time and he is from yeah. a different years. It would but be as, funny if they I was gonna say if they it, you know, you remember those trailers they did when Lilo and Stitch was coming out and they put Stitch in all those uh oh the, those yes. Disney yeah, animated like movies. Yeah. Yeah. If they did something uh-huh. like that. Oh, and he's like, yes, I've been brilliant. And you know mm-hmm. and it's like it's obvious that it's been that he, that he he's been inserted in Photoshop, mm-hmm. but he just insists, like, oh yeah, I was there. Trust me. Yeah. I mean, so the battle's gonna be like, look, just just, just just pan the camera Sokovia. a little more to the right. Look, I'm right there. Yes. In the taco, <laughs> you know. It's like I was I was there having shawarma with you. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I was just in the bathroom you see that, that little red spot over there? That was yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> I was washing my hands. I was getting a refill on my drink. I was at the soda fountain. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it was a, <laughs> totally. Yes, I was at that fight at the airport. Mm-hmm. How come you didn't see me? I saw yeah. you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's exactly. Ninety nine point nine percent sure that's how it's gonna go. <laughs> Still oh, pretty a lot of fun. Yeah, pin tech tech. Like I was shrunk the entire time. Mm-hmm. Um. And then thank you, Jelaine, for doing Googling for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Indiana Jones, The Last Crusade was the first PG-13 Indiana Jones movie. So not Temple of Doom. I think Temple of Doom helped make the PG-13 Yes, <laughs> yes. yes that was yeah. the one they were like, wait a minute, we need... Yeah. Uh-huh. We need a middle, a middle like, thing a here. People are, pull- people are pulling hearts out of chests. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This this isn't this isn't PG this isn't PG yeah. content right here so yeah and it's and it's not like you know the MPAA or anybody would be like oh let's let's preempt this and before before we get parents pissed at us no 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 that was oh. that was a it was a knee jerk reaction to mm-hmm. oh yeah I guess we should I guess we should have something there that isn't mm-hmm. And showing the chilled monkey brains for dessert too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that, that was one. that. That was that one. Mm-hmm. Yep, indeed. So, thank you, Shalane, once again for your feedback. We hope that you had a very good birthday and you got lots yes. of nerdy gifts, which I'm sure you did. Yep, <laughs> indeed. All right. Movie God to Fandom Christmas. <laughs> uh, San Diego Comic Con once again took place over the weekend, full of all sorts of shenanigans. It was quite fun to see people's tweets and TikToks and Instagrams and all the things that the kids do these days. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, all the stuff that gets up on the interwebs. Right, mm-hmm. exactly. So um, not a ton. Still, we still got quite a bit from Marvel because it's Marvel. Um, mm. And we, we got a lot of announcements but not necessarily a lot of content mostly just logos yeah i think people are still kind of yeah i think they're still kind of like uh uh well let's put stuff in pencil or you know they still haven't caught up from a couple of years of will you know is it gonna happen will it happen i don't know but i mean we also have D23 Expo in like a month and a half. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it kind of feels like there's, because there's D23, Warner Brothers had something like that. It feels like, like yeah. they're all, they all seem to be doing their, their own thing. Kind of like, you know, everybody has their own streaming service now. They yeah. also have their own convention where they announce this stuff. But yeah, you know. yeah like in Star Wars had like this a celebration last month, I think it was, or something like that. Celebration, yeah, yeah. But 
here it is. It's still ongoing and stuff is happening. Yeah. So oh, I I well, we should I, I fully expect there to be at least a few supposedly Disney or you know, Disney slash Marvel still has like six to eight announcements in their pocket for D20 Year Expo. <laughs> right well it, it, i also d uh, and, and d23 that's like that's also the parks and yeah and it's the, the movie the the yeah. the animation pixar mm-hmm. star wars so anything and everything that disney owns so mm-hmm. i i expect d23 to also to be mostly a lot of park mm-hmm. related announcements and like studio announcements because next year is the 100th anniversary of the disney studios being founded so i imagine that there's gonna be yes. quite a bit in the way of announcements for things for that uh, so but they didn't want to leave us hanging so. with san diego comic-con uh so there's that um that being said we did get a few other things not marvel related including our first look at once again movie studios thinking they can take games and adapt them into movies with <laughs> dungeons and dragons honor among thieves Which, there's a gelatinous uh, cube that's yes. all i gotta say there's a gelatinous cube i, I, I will say this at least for that <laughs> yes I will say this, and you know, this is after talking with Jared and some of our other, you know, D and D friends. Um, because there have been D and D movies in the past. There was also a, there was an animated cartoon, you know, Saturday morning cartoon back in the day. And this, you know, people are are, are excited about this, or you know, there's at least some positive. Because a lot of times you'll get movies announcements, I guess, like, oh gosh, they're going to screw it up. But this one actually has some potential to be fun. Because it is clear that they are not taking it 100% seriously. I mean, they are, yeah. but I mean, you think about, you know, when you, you know, we, we played D&D and there were a lot of jokes mm-hmm. and funny things going on and, and, you know, tongue in cheek and whatever, go, you know, all these, all those different things. So it's not like, it's not high fantasy. You are not reenacting Lord of the Rings, Tolkien. Uh, I mean, you, you are on some level, but this is more like Guardians of the Galaxy instead of Tolkien, if if mm-hmm. you catch my drift. And and you know, and you know, the Bard is kind of a joke, but Bards that's just how they are a lot of the time. People are like, yeah, they the the, the Bards are just hilarious. Or they're supposed to be anyway. So yeah, and so there's a lot like of you know things. Like- I yeah, I was a rogue. So, I, you know, I no, see and you never, shiny. you never let I that damn thief it. out of your sight. Yes, <laughs> yes. So this is very much in the vein of I'm one of the idiots who lives in the galaxy, mm-hmm, <laughs> so I'm going to yep. protect it, even though I'm kind of a screw up. So you know, it's got the humor that that most you know D and D players would have anyway, and so I, I think I think that's where um that that's where that that's the angle they need to take with it to make it work is not like play it 100 percent straight like ooh we're going to you know we must save save the world save the universe and we're going to do it with with glory and honor and blah 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 they're like no they it needs to be you guys are murder hobos you want Mm -hmm. treasure and you want to you know you want treasure you want to kill bad guys you want to get xp that's Mm -hmm. that's what you that's what you're doing Mm -hmm. and you know that that's you're you're just in it for for your yeah. own for your I, own I, sake. And, you know, sometimes I, I, you'll I wanna, have a. a I'm gonna a, live long yeah. enough to make it to the next tavern and have gold enough gold in my pocket to buy a drink. Yeah. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I, I think with Betty? with the humor that they have in it. <laughs> no, no, no. Betty Betty was a very. Um, she she was she, she was a a t- I don't want to say typical, but. Um, she's, she's a very good example of a D character. Just you know, I want to get a drink and I want to get it, ha- you know, live long enough to, to. I only had to be carried to spell, once to, to spend gone. my treasure. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so that that is that that that's what it is. So don't, yeah. yeah. So 
I think I think if the, if this is the t- the angle they're going with it, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Mm. And clearly from the trailer, they're like, okay, I I I think you know who your target audience is. I think you get it. Let's just keep all that weird high school prom stuff that they're that some of that some of those settings that they're putting out with the books these days uh keep that out of it let's just you know let's have the druid like the, the cute little tiefling druid she turns into an owlbear and wrecks stuff mm-hmm. that's awesome let you know more of yeah. that or you know we're making fun of the bard or you know or and you of know, course we're, the we're, bard is good looking because we're mercenaries and we g- <laughs> Well, yes, but it's like, what do you do? I sing songs. Like, like you think about a bard, and you're just really like, what? This is okay. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, well, I mean you, think, you, think of, you think of a character I, I, like Chris Pine, who's kind of like this mm-hmm. action star. If you were going to class him, mm-hmm. bard wouldn't necessarily be where you'd put him. You'd be putting him more of a, no. you know, something more warrior type. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but ca- casting him as the bard and having the bard kind of be the the main character here, or I guess he could be telling the story. I don't really know. Just we just have the one the one trailer. But this is this is actually getting people talking and getting people excited, or at mm-hmm. the very least, optimistic that this could work because D and D fans have had some terrible movies. I mean, some of them have been like so bad it's good, or you know, cheesy that you enjoy. But some of it has just been like, holy crap, you can never make a good D&D on-screen adaptation. And it's basically because they've taken the lore way too seriously. And it's like, no, 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 no. No, you got to you gotta do the game. Or you got to do the movie the way you would play the game. Like, mm-hmm. you know, what, what it would be, the attitude that would be a, around your table, what the players would do, the jokes, the uh, kind of tongue-in-cheek, the sarcasm. I mean, they're, okay, so several years ago when jared was um was starting the D campaign at his last li- library branch and he was doing it for teens there was this one kid who had never played D before but he wanted to get into it and we were starting the campaign and we're like okay you know you're in a bar and you meet people and you know that that that, that setting starter but then you know oh there's trouble there's a fight and you know it comes around to him and it's like okay so what do you do and he goes i finish my drink and then he got into the fight <laughs> <laughs> and just the way he said, I finished my drink was so funny. It's like, oh yeah, you're going to, it was just so on point and just no hesitation. Like, oh yeah, right you're going to do kid. great here, kid. <laughs> yeah. it, it was, it was, it was brilliant. So, so yeah, so it's, it's that kind of humor and there's going to be, I think there's going to be a lot of heart to it as well. So it's not going to mm-hmm. be just totally like jokes, joke, 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 joke all the time, but you do need mm-hmm. some humor in there and some some levity and not taking it quite so seriously so i think i i think this is going to be i I mean i don't want to jinx it because we have had so many bad ones but i think it's gonna turn out okay i think we're gonna have some Mm -hmm. fun with this so Mm -hmm. yes we will see but it is i I, yeah the 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 D &D crowds or at least you know the rpg gaming type people that i know including my husband they're like, yeah, this could be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to this, yes, but we'll see. Me so too. That one, I had, that one, yeah. I had messaged one of my friends. I'm like, this looks good. He's like, yes, it does. I'm cautiously optimistic. I mean, that mimic. I'm just like, holy crap. <laughs> Are we good? Right. It's cute. It's like, <laughs> check, check. Mm-hmm. Yes. Me up, please. <laughs> yep. Yep. It's not just the, you know, the big, the, the, the big elaborate set pieces or the, you know, the dragons or whatever. It's, it's 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 a you're you're getting attacked by jello <laughs> and that uh-huh. is totally okay uh-huh. mm-hmm. so yeah and it'll it'll be a good time i think there's there's been a few memes obviously uh-huh. and my favorite one like it said four tickets please and it's the stranger kid a uh, stranger thing kids <laughs> like, yes <laughs> Although I, I will say I'm glad that none of the Stranger Things cast are in here because I'm like that would have been way too yeah. on the nose. Yeah, yeah. that would. So as much as we do love them, and I yes, they are really bummed that I missed our... their own campaign yeah. in real life. This is true. Right? <laughs> yes, this is true. I'm just. I'm I'm just saying, like you know, they could have like, oh hey, nod nod, wink wink, we got one of the Stranger Things kids in here, like uh, okay, yeah. but and, and I gotta say, I am so bummed that I missed our review. I got our I got the, our calendar all screwed up, so I 
was so I was like, oh no, I didn't. I wasn't there to review it because I loved Stranger Things four. But anyway, mm. that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but anyway, so Dungeons and Dragons, Honor Among Thieves. The fact that they're leaning into yes, they're thieves. I think is uh-huh. a good sign. So yes. mm-hmm. let's let's see where this goes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Um, and then we got um, our first trailer for the sequel to Shab- Shazam. <laughs> mm-hmm. Shazam Fury of the Gods, which, you know, as much now- as the DC universe for the most part is just blah. I loved Shazam. Shazam yeah. was a fun <laughs> movie. It, it, yeah. <laughs> So, it's Zachary Levi. I love him. The whole yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. He's great. I I love because uh, he came to Salt Lake uh, Fan X soon after that movie initially came out. Mm-hmm. Um, and we went to his panel, and he just was like, just so excited to to be in the movie that he's finally gets gets to be a superhero. And but he's just like he is perfect casting for you know he's supposed to be a kid who gets the you know these superhuman powers. And he, you know, has to be, he's, he's an adult, but he's a kid in an adult's body. He's the perfect casting for it. And you just, mm-hmm. yeah, I love him. It's, it's brilliant. And the, this trailer looks like it's going to be, it's going to be pretty good. Although I had to laugh because when he's going through all the, the DC superheroes and all of the, you know, like I, you know, and you see the little flashbacks of, of the different ones when they showed the flash, he didn't see his face. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> cast that guy, aren't you? Oh, uh, because you could, because because Batman was clearly Ben Affleck. Aquaman mm-hmm. was yep. was Jason Momoa. You saw them. Yeah. Uh, but the Flash, it's just he's he's running in this like lightning and the way that his his it's head so is. You blurry. don't see his face. Yeah. Yeah. And probably a good thing. Very yeah. very much so. Very much so. With what? But I just I on? because there has been. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so much going on with 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 all that, and I'm like, oh yeah. So I, that was just one little thing I noticed, but the rest of the trailer looks like it's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, it's you know, it's gonna, it's just kind of funny that okay, so and I don't know a lot about Shazam, just in you know, lore wise in the comics or anything, but like he has all the powers of the gods. It's like okay, clearly you gave those to somebody to give to other people, so now you're pissed about it because it's kids right it's like mm-hmm. oh okay whatever but so that'll be interesting but yeah so i think the i think the premise should be a good one i'm just like and because they did the first one really well i'm not too worried i'm just at the same time i'm kind of like hmm okay it's dc although they seem to be getting their act together but just don't screw it up okay mm-hmm. this is this is one of the ones it's one of the few you still have that that's that's pretty good. So mm-hmm. we'll see what happens. Yep. I love the line. I just threw a bus at a dragon. I love my life. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, and pretty much everything else from here on out is gonna be Marvel related, but uh first up um this is really cool um madame tussauds you know the wax museums um Uh have teamed up with marvel which if depending on which madame tussauds you go to you will find um sometimes they will have like a like comic book or like not celebrity section so they'll have like your superman your batmans your spider-man type thing um so like fictional characters done in wax form um mm-hmm. but they have gone a, a step further and they have teamed up with marvel to create a 4d movie experience so yeah, if you've been to to you know any amusement park or the like where they have like the the theater where you sit down the seats move there's lights and special effects um that sort of thing um so they have uh built a 4d attraction that is going to be you can experience it in new york hollywood or las vegas locations um but uh 
uh, there's a, a short little uh, video on YouTube that we'll have linked in the um, in the show notes. But yeah, they uh, it's a whole thing with you know all your recognizable characters: Captain Marvel, Thor, Black Panther, you know, Spider Man, Ant Man, Wasp. Um, so, but it's going to be a full like interactive experience that is really cool and there's chance hopefully that stays open for a while because i might be going to las vegas next year so Ooh, that'll <laughs> that's be fun. the case i will have to go and do it because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is very that looks very cool so. yeah definitely um the one time i went to madison's homes in new york I didn't see it, but the 41 that they were offering then was SpongeBob. Like, uh, it was like oh, a lot yeah. more exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. The one time I've been in Las Vegas, that is the Madame Tussauds I've been to, but that was all the way back in 2008. So who knows if they even had something like that then. Um, and if they did, what it was. <laughs> so it's been a long time. <sighs> uh so but the right, madame tussauds museum has changed you know, since then <laughs> yeah the madame tussauds yeah. museums are you know obviously the when it comes to like the wax figures and stuff they're the top of the top as far as them actually mm-hmm. looking like who they're supposed to look like <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I, I love There's watching some videos really bad ones out there I, I like watching the videos of like people going to one of the, one of them and like posing by one of the, the statues and it turns out to be the actual celebrity. person yeah yeah <laughs> and then they just move it's like you can just see the people just jumping it's so funny there like, is surprise that actually is nicholas cage I'm running yes, <laughs> yeah <laughs> there is an episode of miraculous ladybug where they go to a wax museum and you know well the 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 kid who is a uh, cat noir is um well here anyway he's famous but he also goes to her school and he's you know her crush and he's really sweet and just a down-to-earth kid and he's also you know cat noir um and she's ladybug but they don't know they don't know their identities anyway that that's a that's it in a nutshell anyway He's there to get his wax um, statue fixed for some reason, but and she's with there. She's there with him. Plays a prank on her, pretending to be this the statue, and she like <laughs> practices telling him like, "Oh, I have a crush on you, and I love you so very much." And then she leans in to kiss the statue, and it's really him. Oh wow! <laughs> I mean, obviously this this is this is an animated show, so they can you know get away with that. But it's still like mm-hmm. the whole time you're watching it, you're like, I don't know whether to laugh or to cringe, but it's just so <laughs> funny. Uh-huh. But I used to which so I, see yeah. myself doing that when I was like little, like going to a wax with like a crush I had, <laughs> just saying that. I can just imagine the embarrassment when I realized, oh shoot, yeah, like, oh I did. I- uh, that was I was just and then he realizes like oh that was a really bad joke I'm sorry because <laughs> he's you know very considerate that way and it's just it's just funny and it's so cute um but mm-hmm. yeah it's like so you know talking about Madame Tussauds and and the 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 lookalikes that made me think of that I'm like oh gosh <laughs> <laughs> oh it's a fun one yeah uh so yeah if you find yourself in hollywood las vegas or new york mm-hmm. there you go yeah all right now on to stuff in chronological order ish some stuff we have actual dates some we just kind of have summer fall of this year so obviously write stuff down in pencil yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah although Disney As Plus always. seems like they could probably. Yeah, be unless okay. just unless something there's... happens and there's production yeah. delays. Oh, oh yeah, that... that's but, always yeah. a thing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so, closest to now is our next feature release. Um, 
and that is Black Panther Wakanda Forever set to release this November ish uh, again in pencil uh, <laughs> <laughs> so um, and oh ooh, the feels the chills mm-hmm. yes trailer just because uh, it's they've there's you a know, lot going obviously on we, here. We don't know exactly yeah. how they're going to work it in, but it's it's pretty obvious that they've had to kill off T'Challa in the universe because yeah. Chadwick is not with us anymore. Um, what exactly is the circumstances behind that? We'll find out probably when the movie's released. Um, and I would love to know what the translation is, is what is written behind that one poster or that one sign billboard mm-hmm. that we get the shot of i would love to know what that reads mm-hmm. yeah so i mean they the the presentation that they did at, at san diego comic-con hall h of course um bless the people that wait in line for hall h yes. y'all are titans of fandom um <laughs> at one point somebody posted a video on tiktok of the line hmm. and it was so long <laughs> so so long <laughs> yeah no um it's what it takes yeah mm-hmm. um uh, of course kevin feige was there doing all the announcing um and uh, like i said not a lot of content per se but in this case we actually do have a a trailer um and before they showed the trailer they did this beautiful um presentation of these african uh musicians and dancers and singers they came up through the audience up to the stage playing music that i'm assuming is probably going to be part of the score um it sounds very similar to some of the music that we heard in the first black panther movie um then of course you know they were in the traditional garb and everything mm. and it was just i just i love how much they have embraced the that this is african you know this is mm-hmm. a movie with african-american people wakanda is in africa the people making this movie are people of African heritage and just really are clinging to that and making that the the soul of these movies. And it's, I think it's just absolutely beautiful. Uh, and then, of course, Ryan Coogler, the director, came out and they showed the trailer. And I'm sure in the audience there was probably not a dry eye in the house. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, um, and I guess. Uh, I, uh i kind of skipped over (laughs) but uh technique uh, yeah that's our next feature length but obviously our first our next release just the mcu as a whole is she hulk on disney plus which we get next month um Mm -hmm. and we got a, a new trailer for that with the updated cgi and from what i've heard people are liking the looks of this cgi a heck of a lot better which uh-huh. i told you so uh yep. <laughs> yep it was going to be if they were gonna fix it um and um uh, gives us a, a even more of a feel of what the dynamic is going to be like and it's obviously they're leaning into the comedy uh aspects of it, of it although there's some you know obviously some serious stuff because we've got uh the abomination <laughs> there yeah uh so not not safe not cool um and why i was surprised wong when wong showed up on the trailer i don't know why <laughs> considering the last time we saw the abomination he was with wong uh-huh. No, I was uh-huh. the same way. I was in like Shang Chi, so I was like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, I guess that makes sense." <laughs> yeah. Oh, and then a nice little surprise that I my mind short circuited for several minutes, and even Chauncey was all like, "Marvel, San Diego Comic Con." I'm like, "Yes, 
<laughs> and again, once my brain rebooted, uh, I said, oh, well, this makes complete sense. She <laughs> is a, you know, uh, she's obviously the Bruce Banner's cousin. She's got uh -huh. similar powers to his, although she has way more control over the Hulk thing um, than he does. Uh, but, you know, she's, you know, a superhero, someone with abilities, who's a lawyer. Who else in the MCU is also a superhero who's also an attorney? Hmm. Let Gee, me I wonder. A certain already... avocado at law? <laughs> well, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> it does. Um, of course daredevil might make an appearance who knows the first thing about being a superhuman and a, you know and an attorney at the same time ask matt murdoch so uh, yep. <laughs> but i know several people that are very big daredevil fans that i'm sure that their mind probably exploded uh yes when, and yeah. remember spandex is your friend your best yes friend. <laughs> bruce is not like so oh, bruce oh so good so good I we don't have to like... replace all, all the pants <laughs> yeah at like uh, one point they need her to change she's like i like this outfit <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, i need to start buying your attorney outfits at, like the goodwill or something there <laughs> yeah or see if they can or see if they can do a high quality spandex attorney suit for you so you don't have to worry mm -hmm. yep I mean, you need to go talk to the guy that makes uh daredevil's costumes mm -hmm. <laughs> or talk to shuri i'm sure she'd be able to think of something for you yeah Ooh. that too Uh, oh, all right. Uh, so not an, a, not next up, not a date, but spring 2023. So early ish next year, we are getting Secret Invasion, which is going to be a series on Disney Plus. We knew this was coming. We just didn't know exactly when. Apparently, they did show some of it at Hall H, but it's not on the internet out there. Colby Smulders. Made it appears to Hall H though, and uh, essentially has told the audience that as far as like the tone, it is going to be very dark. Okay. So we'll see. <laughs> um, like, yeah. Then, oh dear. Oh. It was, it was like, oh, can gosh. we really get any darker than like? infinity war and endgame because that got pretty right. gnarly there dark. Uh, yeah i mean dark can so also be relative snapping away half the population it, yeah because it's like mm -hmm. you got the snapping away half the population dark and then you have like morbius dark right yes. yeah so it's like this is, yeah i'm gonna be more specific here but it doesn't matter i'm here for yeah. it um mm -hmm. as long as we can see things because some dark yeah as long as it's not literally yes. dark Movie. like dark. all yeah. three all three uh releases of the all the all parts of the godfather trilogy where i could not turn up my screen brightness high enough <laughs> as long as it's uh, not that kind of dark yeah we'll be fine right. yes <laughs> <laughs> i'm not bitter uh <laughs> Uh, uh, it, uh, still uh, scheduled uh, where I have it written in pencil uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 set to release May 5th, 2023 James Gunn, rest of the crew showed up, of course uh, Chris Pat Bob Clemente, Karen Gillan all of the, 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 the crew um, I have not seen anything confirming this but i did see in one group that supposedly they confirmed or said or showed something that supposedly bill murray is going to be in this movie 
Ooh, huh. I had I had seen that rumor too when I was scrolling through Facebook on one of my Marvel feeds. So mm-hmm. we'll see. Which, I mean, if you're gonna put Bill Murray in the MCU, Guardians Good spot for him. makes the most sense. It, yeah, it honestly yeah, does. he's gonna be in anything. It's gonna be it's gonna be Guardians. Yeah. <laughs> That's, holy crap so but either way i'm like oh well i mean i was already there but hey this could yeah. be even more fun <laughs> mm-hmm. so bring it on uh well, and if then... he happens to have an alien goal for sidekick even better yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious please james gunn You've got time before release. Put that in there. Uh, You're welcome. (laughs) Film another big credit scene. I mean, Guardians 2, we had what, seven? (laughs) Five. We had credit scenes. Why not? Let's just let's start tagging on more. So I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) um, And then currently in production, but set to release next summer. Loki season two, yay! Which both Tom Hiddleston and Owen Wilson have been spotted in London, filming, running around. Tom's got the Loki hair. Um, even when he went, uh, one day I guess he had the day off and he went to Wimbledon, sitting in the royal <laughs> box with all the other celebrities. He has the Loki hair, so. <laughs> So there's there's no there's no denying that one. That one is currently in production. So that is a very, very good thing. So um, and then you don't want to talk about dark. If I think the MCU is going dark, this is a lot sooner than I thought we were gonna get this. So color me surprised when Kevin Feige announced that we are getting blade November of next uh-huh. year. Wowza. In theaters. That's quick. Yeah, That's that quick. Is very quick. I yeah. did not think we were getting Blade that it, soon. I thought Blade was still going to be several years off. Yeah. Um, Damn. yeah, it's I do know it's got it's got some work to do to win people over because that Wesley Snipes version, people are like, Yeah, that's 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 it. That's the one. And yeah, yeah. But we'll see. The first the first two were kind of untouchable for the blade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somewhere Ryan Reynolds crossed. is going. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Third time's the charm. <laughs> See how Marvel, it goes. DC Marvel. <laughs> but yeah, that's it. That is exciting. Because um, mm-hmm. I, I did not expect Blade to be on the, the docket for that soon. So yeah. Um, that it has to be in production already or will be very very soon well you you said oh it's got to be dark so it's probably all on in closed sets yeah that's true uh, <laughs> yeah. well not completely isn't blade a daywalker <laughs> yeah true <laughs> so we may see Mahershal ali possibly out, but... you know in 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 the sun at some point uh-huh. so i guess stay tuned um streets of atlanta be very very busy if that's where they're gonna be Uh filming um and then um uh summer uh also summer 2023 uh on disney plus echo which we knew this was coming the echo is gonna get her own series after hawkeye um so mm-hmm. not a surprise there. Ironheart, also original series coming Disney Plus fall of 2023. Again, not a huge surprise. I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be Riri Williams. We see in the Black Panther trailer. That's what I'm assuming. Reading yeah. Shuri, considering uh-huh. she's hammering mm-hmm. and a piece of metal falls out, and it's a spot on in the, the logo shape of the heart. Iron heart yeah and it, it looks yeah. exactly yeah. like the logo so i'm pretty sure yeah. we're gonna get it. well and there was i believe that was the case too that we yeah. 
we were supposed to get Riri's introduction in the in well the and Black Panther, Jared so. Jared showed me an image I think it was um like a, like a Black Panther like Monopoly it was a, it was a board game of some kind mm-hmm. and it was is Black Panther themed and there was an image that I think is supposed to be Ironheart but it's like she's in a very crude looking um version of of the suit but it's got the heart that heart symbol on it just like it's in the trailer so i uh, i should have grabbed it from him or had him text it to me um but yeah he was showing me to that to me earlier when we were at lunch and i was like oh okay so she's i don't know is she from wakanda or is she just someone that i guess that depends on what i mean i know what they do with the origin story because she's because i I know i know her origin in the comics but they've i mean they don't always stick with that origin exactly. story yeah. for these but it was just kind of interesting to see that and i was like wait this is like so like oh i just saw these dates yesterday and then jared's like oh here here's this packaging for this board game i can't even remember it was either or you know whatever it was mm-hmm. um but yeah like so she was she was on it with all the other you know black panther wakanda characters so who yeah. knows yeah so she may have been someone that Shuri picked up in mm-hmm. uh, because at the end of the first Black Panther, T'Challa is essentially giving her the leadership to create like, you know, Wakanda schools around mm-hmm. the world for like, you know, disadvantaged Black youth. And so she may have just come across Riri in that so uh, you're like uh, super yeah. smart well, kid very, you know very yeah very Peter Parker-esque intellect just doesn't necessarily have the resources yeah. well I'll, I'll say been, this it so. yeah it I'll say this it will it beats having her origin be she she built the the suit out of stuff she stole yeah 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 so if she's like a student in this one of these schools it'd be like okay well i'll take that over the other origin story and from the comics because that one's yeesh yeah yeah i'm sure they'll fiddle with it just like they did oh with, yeah with kamala's oh, yeah. origin too so um uh, but that that that's cool so mm-hmm. i i'm ex i'm excited for that so because Riri is also a fairly new-ish she, entry into the comics, a lot yes. like Kamala. So, well, let's see. Because I remember Ironheart was announced in the comics not long after uh, Jane Foster was, uh, you know, Mighty Thor mm-hmm. when that when that change was made. So yeah, there was that. That's so that's that was just before alex was born if i remember right like a year or mm. so before that and he's gonna be five next month so there do yep. the math <laughs> yeah yep so um and then <laughs> merry christmas to us next year maybe uh <laughs> agatha coven of chaos <laughs> <laughs> original series coming to disney plus winter of 2023 so that should be fun um and then uh the animated series spider-man freshman year coming at some point in 2024 on disney plus so that is going to give us more of Tom Holland's Peter Parker slash Spider Man pre his introduction in Civil War. So, so they're gonna have to make him look like he's fourteen. Well, it's animated. Oh, okay, animated's yeah. fine then. Yeah, it's an animated series. Uh, so. I'm just gonna say, but Tom Tom Holland still looks like he can be pretty young, honestly. Yeah, but not that, that is young. <laughs> that. Yeah, I, yeah. That is true. It's just also like, how young are they going to make this guy? (laughs) If we're Marvel, we could do what we want. Clearly. Yeah. 
Um, and then going back to the movie theater, again, Mark and Pencil, May 3rd, 2024, Captain America, New World Order, no relation to anything in professional wrestling, as far as I know. Uh, <laughs> right. Well, you know, never know. That is true. They uh, they could they could throw a fast one. Up. That is true, oh, yeah. but we can probably safely assume that this is going to be Sam Wilson's foray into leading a Captain America film. So obviously, Sam took over the mantle in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, so we can more than like are going to see Anthony Mackey as the lead in this film. So, and whether we will see Bucky with him, TBD. <laughs> I personally hope so. I, I love the banter. Yeah. I yeah. do too. Yes. And there was not nearly enough Bucky in Falcon and Winter Soldier. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. And then kind of coming off the heels of his return in Spider-Man No Way Home and his upcoming appearance in She-Hulk Attorney at Law, Charlie Cox officially coming back in a Daredevil series in spring of 2024 in Daredevil Born Again. So hmm. with Charlie Cox and vincent d'onofrio which again not a surprise because i could have told you kingpin did not die at the end of hawkeye oh, uh, no, no, <laughs> no. a shot might have been fired kingpin is not dead <laughs> so <laughs> but that is, that is very cool that it's i mean it's very cool that we've had charlie already make an appearance you know in spider-man and mm -hmm. now he's going to be in she-hulk um but hopefully as i've been telling other people yeah as much as i love charlie cox as daredevil i've met the man it was very cool i have a photo of him and i together i was dressed as Justin jones he called me jj um <laughs> <laughs> um I really, really hope that this means that the door is open for the other defenders because I would like my girl Jessica Jones to come back, please and thank you. Yeah, well, they, they def Daredevil. <laughs> Daredevil is definitely the the big name of yes of those. Yeah, but if I, he does I would well. Love to see yeah. her and Luke Cage and even Iron Fist. I, yeah, I, well, or maybe maybe just a little bit of Iron Fist. <laughs> in a way to give us that daughters of the dragon that they teased us with misty knight maybe if they if they toned down the girlfriend if they <laughs> that they never got to pay tone down the whininess a little bit they could it could make it work but who knows yeah it was like just just, yeah. just bring danny rand back just enough mm -hmm. so that we can get daughters of the dragon properly yeah please and thank you i would be <laughs> fine with that just saying so um and then back in the theaters thunderbolts currently scheduled for july 26 2024 so we're going to get to see the man formerly known as captain america <laughs> from falcon to the winter soldier yeah. As <laughs> as I understand this, this one is sort of Marvel's answer to Suicide Squad. Yeah. Yeah. So we they're kind see. of the anti Avengers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the Suicide Squad is the anti Justice League. Yeah. So I was going through this list with Jared last time. I'm like, I have no idea what Thunderbolts is, and that's how he explained it. I'm like, oh okay. that is what essentially a certain Contessa has been you know grabbing people for mm -hmm. in theory so yeah so we should we we should be seeing the man formerly known as captain america and probably uh yelena uh, and off the top of my head i can't think of i'm sure there's more uh so so i think um, those are the only two we've 
yeah the, the only thing yeah. that yeah, the only thing that's that kind of sucks is the thunderbolts in the comics was a group organized by general ross and we no longer have general ross because william hurts now passed so mm -hmm. So that is the that yeah, is the only could, thing is I, I guess they could do it still do it in his name like oh this is something that he had that he'd started the ball rolling mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know other people are are keeping it going I guess so um but yeah there's there's yeah that we haven't really had a whole lot of characters that potentially could be pegged for that make an appearance yet uh -huh. um well so. that one is in but we've got years. a lot of time yeah, yeah. Uh, they could they could bring somebody in and be like hey yeah. this is i mean this is Z zemo is still out there so i wouldn't be surprised maybe if they brought him back uh -huh. um so but yeah we'll see we shall see um and then um if you saw dr strange and multiverse of madness they really, really probably isn't a big surprise but the fantastic four <laughs> <laughs> now officially on the schedule set to release november 8th 2024 whether we are going to get it's same reed richards in the is universe that would be nice if they could i mean this is one that i'm like i hope so too, i have been waiting it, it makes sense yeah, yeah. it makes sense I, I, it, it's the same face oh it's, i was mm -hmm. just gonna say that you know because we've had those other fantastic four movies and i mean none of them were super great <laughs> some were just yeah out right bad and it's just yeah. it's like i've always wondered like what you know have it marvel actually do those and not an outside studio and yeah. just see see what they do with it i'm i'm curious i am genuinely yeah. curious about i would just make that one work so. I, I hope that they i hope that yeah i'm glad that they're they're doing the fantastic four uh because yeah I, we're obviously we're gonna get mutants mm -hmm. <laughs> as we talked when we talked miss marvel uh, but we don't necessarily need X-Men again right away because there's so many other mutants that have not mm -hmm. been brought to live action yet um, that should get their day. Um, the Fantastic Four, yes, obviously. Third time's the charm, hopefully, like it has been with several other things. Um, <laughs> and yeah. uh, I just hope that they don't re essentially rehash what's already been done twice that we yeah it's yeah. kind of like spider-man we don't necessarily need the origin story yeah because everybody knows the origin story and we don't need dr doom either because he's been done five bazillion times pick a different unless, daddy yeah. <laughs> uh, unless you've got a really 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 good idea that you're dying to try and you're sh and it, you are positive it's going to be awesome. Other than that, uh, just yeah, yeah. Try try something else. Yeah, Please. in my humble opinion, <laughs> you know, maybe do like find a way to mix in the Fantastic Four, maybe with like the Spider Man part of it, and you know, because we're supposed to be getting it. Well, I mean, we kind of did in spider-man no way home with the sinister six but it'd be nice mm -hmm. if we could get like a proper sinister six um i don't know but it's like i don't need to see them go to space mm -hmm. bada bing bada boom powers yeah <laughs> and oh boy here comes victor von doom again you know mm -hmm. been there done that yes i don't need the t-shirt uh so. mm -hmm. but yes please make sure that you have john krasinski playing reed richards just in our universe he doesn't have a beard that's how we can differentiate yes well that's the universe to this universe 
Yeah. I mean, that's how you differentiate other, like all different universes. One, one has a beard, one doesn't. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Or a mustache. I mean, it, it, it's what they even did in Doctor Who. The Brigadier he didn't have a yeah. didn't have his mustache in the in the well Star Trek. Uh, I mean, yeah. the mirror universes. Everybody, it everybody has a has, <laughs> has a beard. Yeah. Or you know, we won't. I won't go down that road. Yeah. <laughs> but if you've ever seen Deep Deep Space Nine's mirror universe episodes and and Kira's alter ego, yeah. <laughs> 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 it's it's fascinating what they got away with in the 90s and bless them yep, and it. it was a thing the evil mustaches of evil yep yep as i do my snidely whiplash and twirl my non-existent mustache <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. uh, yep well, and then 2025, which seems so far away and yet isn't, uh, <laughs> uh, we are going to get essentially back-to-back Avengers movies. Uh, so we're going to get Avengers The King Dynasty, uh, because obviously we got a version of Kang in Loki, Kang proper i think uh i don't think they've necessarily said for sure but another version of kang at least is going to be in ant-man and the wasp quantumania which is due out next year um so what happened in loki is now affecting the larger mcu and we're going to start saying that in this that and the other thing probably in loki season two as well um will help tie that together with probably ant-man and the the wasp um and then some sort of big showdown-esque type thing with king come 2025 with whoever is the avengers by then so um because we are a bit short of avengers at the moment yeah so, yeah i mean we know thor is coming back <laughs> so <laughs> at some point maybe we could pull the guardians and who knows so but uh, uh obviously hawkeye clint is let the man retire uh we've got kate bishop so uh so odds are we're probably i would expect the avengers by 2025 to be maybe thor Kate Bishop, um, uh, the Ant Man and the Wasp, probably, um, and uh, Cap Marvel, maybe Kamala Khan, um, and Rue Williams. So that's seven. That's a good. That's a good roster, I think. So. Uh, we've got we've got a lot happening between now and then, so who knows? <laughs> right. We, especially considering that is going to we're going from the King Dynasty in May of 2025 to November 2025 with Avengers Secret Wars. So you know, whether this is going to bookend Secret Evasion. And yeah. we're going to get to Secret Wars and find out that, oh, no, yeah, sorry, some of these people have been scrolls the entire time. Uh, <laughs> who knows? I can call Oh, dear. It. I can do that. I mean, yeah. we're, going, we're going into phase four, five, and six at this point, mm-hmm. as far as the MCU is concerned. And Black Panther, we're kind of forever, I believe, is supposed to kind of be the end of part three um so then we'll kick off part four next year with the marvels um and then of course ant-man and the wasp quantumania um and uh but they are calling what we had with phases one two and kind of three ish uh was obviously the infinity saga they are now calling phases four five and six the multiverse 
saga. So that's kind of the thing you need to keep in the back of your head as you're seeing these announcements and stuff gets released is because of Spider-Man No Way Home and Doctor Strange and the events of Loki season one. Um, now that the multiverse is really a thing, you can't necessarily trust that what's being released is actually from our universe. The one true. that we've, we've come to know and, and love and mm -hmm. care deeply about. So just keep that in mind. That's all I got to say. Because, you know, because people were having a huge kerfuffle after what happened in, in, in Doctor Strange, Multiverse of Madness with them killing off, you know, the oh. pretty much all the Illuminati. Um, but it's like, oh, we finally got those characters. Yeah, but they're in a different universe. They're not in our universe, so we can still get them potentially in our universe. So, you know, if some, they bring a character in you're really excited about and then suddenly something happens to them and you're like, oh, I only got like five minutes of them. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, this is how comics operate. So why wouldn't comic book movies operate the same way? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The, the Having the multiverse open to us, literally open to us now is ripe for the picking and just going hog wild when it comes to the storytelling because then you can just be like oh it was a different universe yeah there's a variant whatever you know it's not it's not this timeline you know <laughs> so it's like <laughs> so watch be excited and also too you've got the multiverses plus secret evasion so we've got scrolls running around that we have not known about potentially so it's like somebody could be from this universe but it could be also possibly not be that person it could be a scroll mm -hmm. you gotta have to take everything with each, a grain of salt yeah. going and 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 eat eat your wheaties because you got to keep up yeah yeah i mean I fully trust Marvel and Kevin Feige to keep this all straight because they've done a yeah. really good job so far for the most part. It hasn't been absolutely perfect because, uh, I mean, when you got this many moving parts and the fact that TV and film mm -hmm. and stuff, you know, don't move necessarily move at the same speed. Um, and then, of course, you know, we had this pandemic that threw a monkey wrench and everything and has had to rearrange release dates for this that and the other thing so um that's affected the way storylines have been released and, and you know absorbed by the public um so uh you know it, it may from the outside have the appearance of they're just throwing you know spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks but when you've got someone like kevin feige in charge and then you know this roster of directors like james gunn and the russo brothers who get it and are you know obviously seem competent enough to be able to make something that makes sense because yeah even in the hands of the most competent director something like infinity war and endgame could have easily been screwed up just because of the sheer number of moving parts with all the characters and this that and the other thing mm -hmm. um and the fact that the russo brothers were able to pull that off fair play to them <laughs> so right. you know big right. gold star to both of them so oh um yeah, you know, I think as long as they keep their their eye on the bigger overall picture and the bigger story they want to tell with this saga, knowing where it's going to end up and then working backwards, I I think I I've got confidence in them. I'm cautiously optimistic because so far the track record says so 
in my humble opinion that they did not pay me for yeah, i'm right there with you mm -hmm. until it starts going off the rails i'm just like sure sign i'm there <laughs> you know mm -hmm. when's this drop on disney plus i am there you know when's this open in yeah. the movies i am there so and i'm very excited i'm just excited about everything and the potential and the characters that are coming um and the the storytelling that they can pretend you know that they have the potential to do i'm just I'm very very excited and i don't have su i don't have mcu fatigue yet me either same <laughs> so. It's like sign me up. I want more. Yeah. So I, I am a junkie. I am ready for my fix. Bring on She Hulk. <laughs> yeah. Though I am ready for a reappearance or an announcement of getting a certain group of uh agents back together. Yeah. Well, I only if you believe if you pay attention to the rumor mills, uh -huh. there may or may not be one or two making an appearance in secret wars but yeah that is but still you know what i'm getting at though <laughs> purely the rumor mill nobody has been spotted anywhere on sets yeah there's not really been a whole lot as far as like people catching snapshots of folks other than i've seen some like from a distance slightly blurry pictures of amelia clark okay out in the open for for secret wars so that's it that's all i could tell you but that's not a secret either that amelia clark is going to be in secret wars either so right yeah right <laughs> well, I, I, I we shall see another agent <laughs> yes <laughs> that is true that is very very true so there is a lot a lot to look forward to so we'll see mm -hmm. how, how it all goes down yep so anyway well like we said there that was our fandom christmas report as it were but uh, <laughs> if anything if we missed anything because there's a lot there's always a lot um if we missed anything that you wanted to see covered or just hear about um that we missed you can drop us some feedback our email address is five fishfangirls at gmail.com you can also visit our website which is the, which is the five fangirls.com and there you can find links to all of our social media to our youtube channel um, you can leave comments there as well on youtube facebook instagram places where you can support the podcast uh, whether through patreon or our merch shop or any of the others and as always, we thank you for tuning in. We thank you for your support, your feedback, your comments, whatever it is that uh, you send our way or just listening. It's good to have you guys just mm -hmm. along for the ride. And it's been yes. kind of a crazy one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't I don't anticipate it getting any saner. <laughs> so just, you know, <laughs> no. there's that. Like I said, D23 Expo is in like a month and a half. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, like I said, eat your Wheaties. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, unless anyone has anything else, we shall sign off for this week. This is Brittany Dove saying goodnight. This is Chrissy saying goodnight from Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin saying good evening. This is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. I got my pencil. I got my oversized eraser. I'm ready. to the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. You can find more episodes and information at the 5 
Any and all books, movies, games, and any other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders. No copyright infringement is intended or implied. If you wish to support the show, the easiest way is to leave us a rating and review. More ratings and reviews will make it easier for others to find the show. If you wish to support us monetarily, you can do so at patreon.com slash fiveishfangirlspodcast. All money goes towards fees and equipment to keep the show going. For official Fiveish Fangirls merchandise, visit redbubble.com slash people slash fiveishfangirls. We love hearing from our listeners and encourage feedback. You can email us at fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. You can also like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fiveishfangirls. Thank you so much for listening and may the squee be with you.